Hi. <clears throat> Hi. Welcome back to the power quality class, power quality lecture series. In last class, we have seen about the voltage sag and the causes of voltage sag, and we have seen the characteristics of voltage sag or waveforms of response of the voltage when sag is caused due to short circuit and also due to starting of induction motor. Let us see how to determine the voltage sag magnitude today. So determine of, determination of voltage sag means to quantify the voltage sag in terms of magnitude. And the magnitude of the voltage sag can be determined in number of ways. So how we can determine this voltage sag is by monitoring the voltage because these are the monitors we generally use monitors in the system which will be recorded recording all the data. So most of the existing monitors obtain the sag magnitude from the RMS voltage. But whether this type of monitoring the RMS voltage might not uh, continue in the future. But as of now, the current monitors that are used in the system to monitor the data is they are recording the RMS voltage. Anyway, that's a different uh, issue. There are several other ways of uh, quantifying or determining the voltage levels and two most uh, two of the methods which are basically followed or recommended are followed in the system are the magnitude of fundamental component of the voltage by using the magnitude of fundamental component or you can call power frequency component of the voltage we can calculate the or, man, or quantify the voltage sag the other method is the peak voltage of each cycle or half cycle. So you can say you can get confused or what method we can uh, use. So the best solution for this is as long as the voltage is sinusoidal, it doesn't really matter what method we use or we choose for the quantify for quantifying this voltage sag. We can use any of the methods, but these are the basic basic things that we are going to see or discuss. So because we have been dealing with the calculus of RMS values right from our uh, studying beginning of your electrical subjects. Generally, uh, for a waveform, the RMS value is uh, written as in terms of mathematical equation, square root of one by T, where T is called the time total time period and uh, summation vi square where vi is the voltage representation of voltage in rms value the same thing we are going to see whereas whereas going for the total number of time period here we will be using the term called n this n is the number of samples per cycle okay so where this uh, time uh, samples are coming so as the voltage are initially recorded as samples in times, the RMS voltage will have to be calculated in the sample time domain voltage. So how, because the these monitors are recording your voltage in different uh, timings, it's not continuous, isn't it? So these are the recordings of the voltage in the, through the monitors is done through sampling, I mean, number of samples. For one cycle, 256 sample voltages, it will be, collecting or monitoring whereas for half cycle it will be calculating 128 sample okay? or monitoring or capturing or recording 128 samples because we are calculating for full cycle so total number of samples per cycle and this vi as you know is the sampled voltage in time domain the same only difference is what you find here is there it is calculated for the duration of t's whereas here because you are interested in calculating the voltage sag per duration, so we are calculating the total number of samples and integrating over this each sample. Okay, so I'll just uh, take you the uh, figure. 
the next figure uh, what you can observe is the armless voltage which is calculated I, sorry so this is the rms voltage now uh, in this figure this what are the voltage you are able to see there is the rms voltage which have been calculated over a window of one cycle that's what we have been saying uh, and which has 256 samples for the recording used so as the voltage values are recorded to monitors so for one cycle 256 sample templates are recorded so this is the voltage waveform which is recorded with the help of 256 samples each point in this figure you can see each point in this figure is the rms voltage for the preceding 256 point the first uh, i mean i'm repeating the same 256 the first two rms have been made equal to the value for sample 256 okay so you can see so what you can uh, what you are able to observe from this is you can see this figure we can see that the rms voltage so this is the rms voltage one per unit magnitude and when the this is the instant when the fault is occurring and actually what we have discussed in previous class when the volt when the short circuit occurs what will happen can anyone say yeah so what happens when a short circuit occurs there is a voltage sack what is voltage sack the magnitude will drop to 20 percent of drop in voltage so this is the point where the short circuit is occurred so what will happen the voltage is dropping so actually this is instant where the voltage has to drop but what you are able to see is the voltage is reaching to point or 20 percent here that means this is the duration where there is a time delay so we can see what we can observe from this is the rms voltage does not immediately drop to lower voltage but takes one cycle for the transition so this is here at around one cycle and this is the voltage when it is dropping to do so therefore one cycle is there here therefore when the fault is occurring the voltage or rms voltage is taking a one cycle one cycle time duration for the transition from one per unit to voltage of the fault so we also see that the rms value during the fault is not completely constant okay so what you what you are seeing here you can see the rms value during the sag this is the while this is the fault from here to here so during the sag the rms value is not completely constant and the voltage is not immediately recurve so this is where it is starting to improve so from here the voltage sag this is where it is reaching and you can see it is not constant it's something uh, light up and down and for me it's starting english that means this is the point where the fault has cleared and now again you can see as the, there is a time lapse for the voltage to decrease to 20 percent there is also a time lag for the voltage to restore to the normal position that's why what you can see is during the voltage sag during this complete voltage sag here or there anywhere the voltage is not constant the surprising uh, what you can see in this is the surprising observation what you can see in this is once the fault is clear okay you suppose this is the fault is clear this is the one per unit and this is the below one per unit the voltage immediately after the fault is only reaching to 90 percent not exactly going to one percent uh, one per unit so you can see this is the voltage position where the fault is clear so actually at this particular point the voltage has to be one per unit whereas you can see here the voltage is not reached to one per unit but it is only 90 percent of 0.9 that means after the fault is clear only the 90 percent of the pre-sag voltage has been restored immediately after this fault is clear this is the important observation that you need to understand here that's what we have been representing here so this is the duration where the voltage sag i have represented here again the voltage sag is not constant and this is the time lag where the fault during initiation of the fault and the dropping down of the voltage okay the same thing okay this is for same yeah that's what we have been seeing here we see what you have seen from the figure is the voltage is not immediately dropped at lower voltage level 
but takes one cycle for the transition. That's what we have seen. We also see that the RMS voltage during the sag is not completely constant and that the voltage does not immediately recover after the fault. It's very clear what you have seen in the graph. And the other surprising observation is that only the fault voltage after restoration is only 90% of the pre sag voltage. Now let us see if you're taking half cycle uh, duration of RMS voltage. So before uh, you know what you're done is we are taken for one complete cycle. Now it is half duration or half cycle. So how many samples we have collected for uh, one complete cycle? Yes, 255. For half cycle, how many samples we require? Yes, 255 by 2. It means 128 samples. Right. So let us see. So I think you understood. You can anticipate how we do it. Yes, exactly. At the voltages, voltage sag are initially recorded at sample points in time. The RMS will be have to be calculated. The RMS voltage will have to be calculated in sample time domain voltage. And this is done by using the equation, same RMS equation. But here the only different thing is the number of samples are not equal to 120, 256, whereas now it is equal to 128, which is for the duration of half cycle. Hence the equation we are having it as per K. That means only the number of samples limited. So one by N summation I is equal to K minus N plus one to I is equal to K. So let us see the figure uh, the RMS have when the RMS voltage has been calculated while the preceding 128 uh, sample points and only for half cycle duration. This is how it is. It is only for half cycle, whereas the PS1 what you are seeing is for full cycle. Okay. I hope it is clear. Thank you. This is how you are able. So what we have summarized for this today's session is we have seen how to calculate the RMS voltage. Oh, sorry. How to calculate the voltage sag in terms of RMS voltage by using full cycle as well as half cycle. And we have seen the uh, how the response or how the characteristics of you know, voltage waveform behaves for a full cycle. And we have seen the mathematical expression for half cycle and full cycle. In next session, we'll be seeing about the fundamental component. Thank you.